And now to conclude the evening, we have Y, the lucky. Stay, 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 stay. <laughs> and the thirsty cups. Cups, cups, cups. You know, um, we don't really have anything to offer you guys in the way of substance tonight, so I hope you'll, you know, I hope you're okay with that. I mean, I, I did spend the other night sort of looking around on TV for something that I, you know, new products I could tell you about that might be interesting, because I know you guys don't know about cutting edge stuff, and I don't really know. I mean, I'm, I'm just sort of a hobbyist, and I'm not really very well connected or anything. So, um, but I saw this great infomercial, I don't know, um... I don't know, it was amazing. I don't know if you guys have seen this. It was for this um, substance called the Obedience Lacquer. And uh, it's like this paint, right? You buy a bucket of it. Uh, you buy two buckets of it, usually. And um, you take the Obedience Lacquer home, and you, you, let's say you have a Labrador or something like that. You apply two coats to the Labrador, and then two coats to your hand, whichever one you choose, whichever one is most, and, you know, I don't, it doesn't matter. Then you... Give it a day, wait overnight, and then, then from the next day onward, you're able to control that dog using all sorts of hand gestures, and, uh, and you can get it to all, all kinds of things. I mean, they showed all, all kinds of great examples in the commercial. You can um, you know, have to go get bottles and cans so you can recycle them and, and uh, recoup the cost, and uh, they, you can have the dog take your kids on a winter sleigh, or you know, crap in your boss's bonsai tree, or you know, whatever. <laughs> The, the sky's, even the sky's not the limit, you know, with this thing. You could do anything. And, you know, I thought, what a great stopgap until we get robots. You know, I mean, it's like, in, you know, we're waiting, waiting, you know. And now we can sort of use animals as a measure in between. But I was so short-sighted, you have no idea. The testimonials these people gave in the infomercial 
you know, I'm, this is probably redundant from some of you, but um, basically one guy, in a lot of these testimonials, what they'll do is, is it's common to get a koala and paint it with magenta colored, uh, that's the common animal they use. Everyone loves koalas, everyone wants koalas, they haven't been helpful in domestication efforts, so, you know, uh, our hand has, their hand has been forced by our forced hand. So, um, basically, there was a guy on there, smoker for 55 years, but when he saw what the, his koala could do, quit cold turkey. Yeah, that was amazing. Uh, there was another lady in there who, she had severe anxiety, she would go to the kitchen and just the shininess of everything, the pots and the pans, they had them hanging up all around, the tile and everything, gave her performance anxiety. You know, there was, she just, she couldn't do it, she couldn't bake meals for her husband and it was, it was taxing their marriage. So, fortunately, the distance that she got between her and her koala, the koala was able to saute and mince and they showed a lemon halibut that she had made. <laughs> Just gorgeous uh, food. The, the couple's going to Hawaii in August. I was like, that is great. It's, you know, amazing stuff. One of my friends saw, saw uh, two koalas getting interviewed on Oprah, which was pretty awesome. Some people are just too shy to meet other people, and even too shy to get on the internet, really. And, but they're able to use these koalas to meet and hook up. And, you know, their koalas meet at the eucalyptus store, and um, they sort of just... You know, so Oprah was interviewing the two koalas and just really, I don't know, she was, she was, it was, it was great. I mean, sort of taking it easy, but then deep prodding questions and just that good mix that um, she's known for. And so, <laughs> midway through the show, she drops, she says, all right, who wants to see the koala controllers? And she drops a curtain and the shy people are behind it, right? Totally embarrassed, ashamed, you know? I mean, they felt the weight of 50 naked people. They just felt, they felt bare. Um, they weren't, a, they, they had never even seen each other before. They kind of, they, they, they went nuts. Koalas rampage, tore the audience limb from limb. <laughs> on Oprah's show, she's freaking out, screaming. What are you do? What is going on? You know, I mean, she gives out free cars all the time. He gives these koalas giving out free carnage, you know? Like crazy. The whole thing got smoothed over, I guess. I mean, it's not a blemish on the organization or anything. I mean, they, she had them back. They apologized. They reassembled the audience. Uh, Oprah painted the whole audience with uh, obedience lacquer and had them applaud. <laughs> you know? And it was just remarkable. Uh, they have a picture in the newspaper of one of the koalas swearing on the Bible. I'll never do it again. And that's Oprah's book of the month. Bear with me for just a moment. We're delighted to be here today. Huh. Um, it's like Windows XP outside today. <laughs> All the grass is tilted to the left and swept. One or two uh, appropriately, corporately approved uh, Clouds of the cumulonimbus variety. You guys pretend to be Rubyists. I can see right through it. <laughs> Rails are, uh, I mean, you guys, you guys see the language. You, I mean, yeah, you get it. You, I, I'll give you credit, you know. I mean, you see so much good, but there's a history here, okay? Everyone knows Ruby throughout all time. Everyone who's ever lived has known it. It's, I mean, it's been a part of, of everything. Every problem has been solved by it. <laughs> I want to I refresh you on some of your history, okay? First talk I'm gonna, the first uh, hack I'm going to talk about tonight is the professor's pudding. It's a virus that came out around the turn of the century. And um, basically what it did is... Uh, you, you would, you know, become, be attached to something, you would run it, and it would say, uh, it's, it's 1020. 
you know, would you like to enjoy some professor's pudding? And there was an accept or decline. If you clicked accept, no problem. If you selected dismiss, a pop-up came up saying, the professor's pudding is not to be dismissed. And then it would email all your contacts and, you know, with, with, you know, with putting reminders and coupons would start print, spooling out of the printer for uh, cheap, you know, jello pudding cups and um, all your wax cylinders, if they were attached to the computer, would be wiped out. <laughs> Fortunately, wax is read-only. So the damage done was negligible. One of our own thirsty cups here, Leany Clip, actually has done some, some research on the professor's pudding. We're going to talk to her a little bit about this. Hey, Leonie. I'm nervous. Hi, why? Okay. Thanks. Thanks for thanks for having me. Uh huh. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you look great. Oh, thank you. Jelly belly wings. <laughs> okay. So, tell us what you know about the professor's pudding. How did you encounter it? Well, um, originally, I uh, I encountered the the hack. Uh, my dad was installing a program on his personal computer that he had clipped from the newspaper um, out of the, uh, the Sunday coupon insert. He uh -huh. clipped it out of that. And the program actually was designed to turn any file into a bitmap. So he was pretty excited about balancing his checkbook with it. And uh, so he installed the program, you mm -hmm. know, and everything was going fine until, you know, dialog box pops up, tells us what time it is, asks about the pudding, and I was so shocked. I mean, I reacted to this on like, a visceral level. People don't like to be asked about the, about the pudding. I mean, that's no. the thing I, I find when we ask about it. No, exactly. So, I, I mean, I was as upset as anyone. I, I to this day, so. if I think about it too much, my tongue swells up. Right. So I thought the only way to get past this is to, you know, do some research, find out what this is, you okay. know, where did it come from. So, yeah, I mean, was there a professor? I mean, what, how did this thing start? There actually was a professor uh, most commonly associated with the professor's pudding. Um, he, uh, his name was Professor Wilhelm Vargas. He, uh, he was... He was pretty popular, actually, among the student body, uh, but uh, quirky, a little odd. Professor. Yeah. He, he also, um, you know, no one can deny he loved his pudding. Mm -hmm. So I, I can see why that, that tends to be, I mean, he inspired a lot of hijinks. Okay. So, uh, you know. Yeah, so do you see, I mean, what are we seeing today? Are these all student copycats of, like, the original, or, you know, um, I mean, has it stayed in the college system? There, there actually are a lot of, a lot of, you know, copies. Um, you can you can pretty much tell which viruses are uh, sort of mutations of the original strain, and which have just been um, written by you know you know sweaty teenagers. Um, because the sweaty teenagers tend to put a lot of spelling mistakes in. Okay. Um, they they usually actually uh, misspell pudding. They spell it they spell it with a G. Um, so. Okay. So is it? <laughs> Is it spelled pudding? No, no, no. They put the G at the beginning. So oh. if you know, if you come across one and it says, you know, if it's asking you about the professor's pudding, yeah. then you can be sure it's probably a cheap imitation. Mm. Okay. Uh, where do you stand in all this? I mean, wh who do you think wrote it? Well, you know, there are, there are two main camps. It was written by a student, or it was written by the professor, Professor Vargas. Um, actually, after the research, I found that. The truth is, the pudding wrote it. Um, it, it really, it, it's a little hard to swallow at first, but if you, if you, if you really think about it, when you, when you come to understand that the pudding wrote it, 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 everything makes sense. Everything becomes clear, not just about the hat, but also about your life. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of knew that you were steering this direction. I could tell just by the way that you, you were... read my page on Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and just all, I mean, just all the deletions and back and forth that you have, guys have going on there. I mean, I can tell that it's a hotly contested topic, and, and my problem is, is, you know, refrigeration, you know, I mean, the pudding has to leave for a period of time to hack, and, you know, I mean, 
it's it, I, 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 don't, I, I just don't I, I, I don't buy it you know actually when, when you come to understand the historical context of pudding at the time I mean pudding was more robust you know but we're not talking like a late 1980s Bill Cosby pudding here like that, admittedly today's pudding could not have done it however around the turn of the century pudding was essentially um, lard with a crispy horsehair crust so <laughs> It really, it is definitely possible. That sounds like a hacker. (laughs) It it, it all makes perfect sense. Yeah. Okay, um, you know, I mean, I just don't think it's good to blame everything in your life on custard. I'm not really, I don't think that that's good, but I mean, whatever, you know. Well, I, I really, you would be surprised at how many of today's problems can be traced back to confectionery goods. Um, You know, pudding is far more widespread than you may be aware of. I I wouldn't be surprised if there was some pudding in the audience tonight, somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's usually pretty well quaffed when it goes out, so you know, you might not immediately notice that it's pudding. Um, But really, everything from salmonella all the way up through global warming, I think you really can, at least in part, Whoa, I mean, global warming, it's cold. I mean, okay, I, 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 I'll never we're understand we're, that issue, I guess. We're probably just going to disagree on Okay, this. all right, the only clip, everyone. Thank you for your help. Okay, so the hack we're going to talk about is this particular line, which is survived you know, sort of like the permutations of the hack that have gone around. In this hack, uh, it's basically grabbing all the MP3 files in a directory, and can you guys see the line okay, or is it way back there just abysmal? Does that mean you can see it, or...? Okay. Tremendous. So, um, and the cool thing about this hack is it's using method to proc, okay? Basically what it's doing is it's taking the file delete method, delete is a part of the file class, it's a class method, and it's converting it to a proc and passing each of those MP3s through the method. This is kind of a tough hack, I mean, I, but, you know, I mean, basically there's sort of like a cast going on here. And so it goes through the directory, deletes all the MP3, MP3 files. So, um, I, I bring this up now because of the recent symbol to proc sort of fun that we've had over the past year, and now it's like an officially been embraced by Japan. And um, that's, that means that it speaks to all people. And <laughs> it should speak to all of you. And so we're just going to, I'm just going to show you some fun you can have with Method to Proc. Okay, so um, we'll start simple. I, I know what you're thinking, I know what you're thinking. Come on. Come on, put your best practices away. <laughs> Can I get a standing O again from that guy? Oh, it's Glenn Vanderberg. I give you a standing O in return. <laughs> Once this settles in, you'll be doing all your addition this way. Okay, guys, I'm not going to even bother to explain the slide, but uh, basically, you go through the array. Okay, um, here's, here's, now I'm just going to show you how ugly it can get. Can anybody tell me what the answer to this is? Seriously. David Hennemeyer Hansen, what's the answer to this? Hey, where's the DHH girl? What was the answer to the equation? Or to the to the equation? Uh, I won't put you on this. Uh, six and um, sixteen and twenty-six. No. <laughs> you were so close, man. I mean, that's even wrong. I think. <laughs> That's right, that's right. See, that's how screwed up this is, right? Because what it does is it'll go through and it'll take 
4 minus 10, 4 minus 20, 4 minus 30. So the hard thing about this is your operators are just in the wrong place. You know? <laughs> there's, there's no telling. So this is... <laughs> Are you just going to take me serious tonight? Or? <laughs> I'm going to walk away from this a legend. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so, uh, compare. We'll skip that. That's just awful. <laughs> okay, so, um... Here we go. Scanning an array for, uh... Can be easily done with draft. <laughs> so there's no point to really using regexes with method of prop. That's unfortunate. Okay, here's a good one. <laughs> oh, you laughed. Here we've got an array, a two-dimensional array of key value pairs going to turn into a hash. This is actually a very efficient, or you know, a very, a very short way to write it, you know. <laughs> okay, so uh yeah, basically it's going to loop through the array and store each pair in store. The, the cool thing about this method to prop hack is it's one of the few that you can use that's, that actually has two arguments, you know, that just kind of naturally, because store takes two arguments. It takes a key and a value. And basically these, array, these inner arrays are just going to collapse in place as arguments. I don't know. I mean, that's, Dave Thomas, I mean, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> so we get an array out of it. Um, see, here are some permutations of that just for visual comparison. Uh, you have the array inject. Um, you know, and the problem always with inject is just remembering to tack that H on the end. You know, make sure that you're shipping back the right value. Uh, but that's the great thing about it. So, yeah, then you've got a standard array each, which is much easier to read and it's shorter, so. <laughs> Here's an interesting one. In initialize, uh, you can use loop through a hash and um, set the instance variables for each um, for each entry. So, but the problem is you have to look like this. <laughs> so basically, you have to uh, the symbols have to be instance variables, unless you do like a second method to proc. But I didn't really have room in the slide for that. <laughs> Okay, so here we go with, uh, I, I think actually a decent use of method to proc is when you're inside one of your own instance methods and you just want to loop through and pass it to a method that's in that same class. So here basically we've got a parse method. It's looping through each line of that and passing it out to parse line. It's kind of, I mean, it's kind of a dumb method, but, you know, it, it's still sort of, in, you know, it shows sort of the use. I want to, you know, we want to use these. Here's an interesting one, requiring everything in a file. Um, you know, if you've got two, admittedly, I was really hoping we'd go through this all straight faced. And then, uh, I don't know what we do after that. I don't think we could go on with the conference, that's for sure. Okay, uh, you know, casting. Uh, we could dispatch it off to the URI cast. Um, we've got an array of URIs. We want to turn them all into URIs. Um, you can do the same thing with string and integer. Um, so, yeah, it's all ugly, but I mean, look at this in JavaScript. You know, I mean, seriously, do you ever see these enclosures they use in JavaScript? And that's supposed to be beautiful, you know? I mean, we're talking about a little uh, ampersand here, you know? But I, in comparison to all other uh, Ruby code that's out there, I'm, I'm totally with you guys. Oh crap, I don't have any sound. You guys want to give me some sound real quick?
Boogie, a programmer's best friend. Not just a friend, a best friend. Like best best friend? Like a lifelong bosom friend, of course. Wow, so we've been through a lot together. More than that. Believe it. I can't imagine a more loyal and lion-hearted friend. Many classes wrapping my singleton objects in a deep, unyielding embrace. <laughs> How often do Rudy's methods yield to my every whim? The method missing always has my back. Am I right, guys? Always. There's never been a question. You want to know how most languages handle exceptions, huh? They use try catch. Rudy doesn't even understand the meaning of the word try. <laughs> what are you doing? You know, stop. <laughs> try is so weak. I can't understate that. It's about time we got sentimental. We should all be holding hands for this. And Ruby has no catch. Catch is like, oh, oh, I'm falling, Java, please. You are in a rescue mission. Such tremendous courage. How slow. Assemble a team. Scour the mountains. Drag the lakes. We're not stopping until my programmer friend, my best friend, the beloved programmer, is found. Damn you. Damn all of you for losing him. Wow. Ruby loves me like Japanese Jesus. Except, did you want to go back and clean up all those footprints you left? Beach authority had to spend precious manpower. See, close friendship, right? As Paul Simon says, old friends... Sit on that park bench like bookends. Ha! You know, what do you call that formation when two climbers are up on the mountain? Their harnesses are attached, linked. They're clinging to each other. An inseparable duo chiseling their way meticulously over the perilous surface. Ah! We must be crazy. Oh, the Red Bulls they shared, clinking their cans together triumphantly. They brought only one pack horse. What is that? Hell yeah. Kinship. Kinsmanship. Whatever it is. I'd call it that if I were out to the little what we have here. No, it's more. It's elegance. No, I, I, I can try. What is the word for it? What do Greeks call it? I got the dictographer in our presence who dare classify. Oh, man, what is the word? Does anybody have an aspirin? I'm really struggling here. I hate to see me like this. It's like I'm Superman and Lexicon Luther has a big chunk of vocabulary confounding kryptonite he's jabbing it right in my thesaurus gland. People, come on, help me. Anyone. Uh, Ruby writes a boobie. Okay, well, let's just call it Ruby for now. You say Ruby is a friend, and yet Ruby is red. That dark and faithful color which has been usurped by the devil. What? Well, uh, you're the devil? Only if I use Eval. Which I do not. Uh, well, well, anyway, uh, come on, sit down. I, back to what I was... In addition, if I may impose my own widely sense of allegory, can you not see the pagan parallels? Takahashi Method! Right. When a god Jupiter or shadowed the earthling woman Shemiel in her fertile crescents, was there not, and I repeat, was there not a red stone betwixt his fingers? Like this! <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, where are you? Don't be afraid. Let us pray. Oh. Two. Let us deconstruct your word method. The crucial linchpin in this nefarious puzzle. So innocent and yet the carnal flesh basks. Let us be sent. Method. Root word mythos. The god of chaos. The god of godlessness. Methodum. A conduit for druids. Mithurium, a poisonous house constructed by said druids. Hey, now, well, let's just, uh, let's just take it easy. I, I can't see the sun right now, and Miss Moderator, could you crack a window? And three. You mark number three. Three points on the number three. And do you not, Mr. Malski, meet in the moonless night of Carrothens and sacrifice one pure cloven yammer? Upon the single tables of the interpreter, burning the traces of your stacks, lexing and passing with mead flowing in the tambourine, gyrations even I would not believe. Those gypsies will themselves die. Call us for now. Let us make merry and day at the back of this county. A night. A night. Yikes. Whoa. That is awesome. That is totally rude.
movie Jim and Stall That. Did you get all that? <laughs> and more! Wow, that was like the Da Vinci Code. I gotta say, it feels so good to just sit back and watch all these scholarly pursuits fulfilled. We're getting a fantastic look into what makes Ruby so fantastically vital. I admit it's somewhat disparaging to find out how much idolatry I've been party to and on company time, but at least it has all served a greater purpose. That of the elf of oh, he is master of deception. Call me deceived, deliciously deceived, but I will not deviate from my appointment at the smoldering pyre this evening. Yamana, the Yamano, let's go! Join us back at the team. Magic lock at the A Yamano and a lock at the Okay, you guys have a good time. I'm confident that Ruby will one day rescue you and ensure your happy return. You guys go ahead and hash that out. I've got an array of things to do here. Jeez. Invoking the symbol table, that was good. Thank you. But that's the only compliment I'm going to give you. I mean, that is it. Yes, very good. So, you're new here. Yes, yes, yes. Do I know your name? Yes, you did. Oh, yeah, was it, uh... Next to come, new time! Thanks, Chad, on that idea. It might work great. <laughs> Pragmatic. <laughs> Oh, 
that PHP and shrimp cocktail would make me vomit. starting to get hot in here a little bit for me at least I mean it's like starting it's like working on a full hard drive it's got Windows ME <sighs> I don't have you guys used the new version of Windows no. oh really I've been a beta tester for months now um, they, they contacted me it's a really cool version actually I mean I think that you guys are going to dig it um, <laughs> The new version of Windows is called Windows FU. It's really cool. <laughs> Which stands for Fantastic Unlimited. <laughs> the deal is, is Windows FU is like basically trying to move away from productivity. Because everybody else is really focused on that right now. It's, it's saturated. So the deal here is that... <clears throat> 
they figured out ways to help you sort of, you know, stop getting some things done, okay? Like, for example, you could zoom out to see all your apps, right? But you could zoom way out, way, 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 way out. So that they're, they're like little ants, you know? <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, they're way, way down there. So you could easily just close one, you know? I mean, if you've got a spreadsheet looking at you that's just, you know, full of like, it's hard to just ditch that, you know? Just get rid of it. But when you're zoomed way out, you can just stamp on it, you know? I thought that was a totally innovative feature, fe feature, and I just, I just, I mean, their teams are just, they had a whole team on that, and it just was awesome. And I'm stoked and thrilled. Um, they have like a to-do list, basically, where like you, you know, you enter two or three items, and then it traps those behind uh, levels of solitaire, right? You have to beat, you know, like 30 levels of solitaire. <laughs> Pretty sweet. Windows Foo. This was like build 27 or something. It's pretty sweet. So, yeah, like, you, you unlock levels of solitaire, and then you can do an item, and you can do maybe, you know, like, you know, you can do like one every three days or something like that. You, you're progressing, you're getting solitaire done, you're getting to-do done. Um, innovative. Groundbreaking, you know? Um, web 0.0. <laughs> so, the, the, the great, the, the other nice thing about Windows Foo is that basically they've got like a whole, whole wheat interface, right? It's got trimmings and everything. It's sort of like grains, corn, oxen, you know, sort of like harvest time. You know, stop, get back. Uh, you know, things are growing right now. We're not going to go out and get them yet. They're just growing. <laughs> you know? So like, and, and and allegedly, this whole wheat interface leads to 75% fewer printer jams. <laughs> Especially when printing poo. <laughs> they know their target audience. Okay, the next hack we're gonna talk about is Hotel Wars 1945. Uh, back in the 40s, uh, hotel chains would use Ruby to combat each other. They had DRV processes lined up. But the kid that started it all was a young boy who worked as um, a bellhop. And uh, basically, he, he uh, found that he could um, hook up Ruby to the machine's towel drying machine. And it would go out and, it, during the night and steal things from the other hotels, right? It was amazing. And um, it's really a tribute to programming, and I, I think it's something you all need to study because all programming begins with theft, you know? <laughs> Most programmers begin programming something to steal something. Or their programming is stealing something. Um, here are a few of the items they stole. Towels, socks, robes, brass buttons from bellhop uniforms, shrimp forks, soup tureens, elevator keys, Bibles, manual cranks, commemorative matches, laundry baskets, candle snuffers, pineapple spears, guest logs, decorative carafes, freshly laundered gloves, safety pins, bread, Germans, figures, sugar, anyway, all basic necessities. <laughs> so basically, um, this is, this, these are like the things that they could kind of, you know, he, he could get his feelers out, and they'd steal these things from each other, just minor inventory things. We'll do this at the hotel this afternoon, I'll show you how. <laughs> okay, I can't seem to advance frame on this. Um, so, we'll probably just have to move on. Um, it's bad. <laughs>
See off topic. Uh, okay, that was um, that was sort of a song about the the, um, the bubble because uh, the bubble was funny because a lot of people get depressed and I mean you know I mean we we're basically fine you know I mean but it was hard it was hard I'm I'm not I, it was hard but you know random people you know you you'd be hanging out with somebody and they would be pretty <laughs> depressed about it and. Um, you know, just sitting there on the staircase, you know. Like it's, it's the economy, man. So, uh, yeah. I'm definitely here. But not just you. Everyone besides you as well. Oh, yeah, I forgot. What a glorious future. So rich. So lush. And, uh, and it's not even over yet. I'm a gay guy. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. I'm 
a Jesuit priest. Wow. Good choice. I'm a Palestinian. I'm a Palestinian. Oh. Uh, I'm kind of a black guy gymnast. Magic. You're gonna fill up this future with fancy magic. Don't you dare stop doing magic. I won't. I got the move. Hello, you've reached the future. I'm off caressing the innovators right now. Please leave a message. Future, hey, this is Bob Sanders. Wow, it's nice to hear your voice. It's been a wild ride these last couple of years. So many thrills. So many thrills. You know, I caught wind of some of this new stuff you're doing. Outrageous. I really like what I get. It's coming down the pipeline. You have such a way. I've never felt this way before. And believe me, I do. Okay, well, I've got another call coming in. It could be anyone. The possibilities thanks to you are limitless. All right, thanks. Gotta go. Keep real. I'm off. Gotta split. I got a call, so uh, arrivederci. Bonsoir. Kiss, kiss. I'll be your thing. Good night. See ya. Okay. Adventures await some to every corner. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the launch of Amish Man Enhanced. This is just a sampling of the future happening out in the isolated rural colonies of the future. Everyone, we think it's just here, but it's happening everywhere. Everywhere? Is here in the future? I do not want to be here. Ah, oh, God, you have here. It has some beard. My heart's off. Our hearts have stopped. Oh, oh, I yes. cannot tarry. I must leave. My abode is distant. Good day to you. Ten best Amish guy ever. Steed. It's sure hard to imagine that we will perfect on this model, but we inexplicably shall. Revision, revision. I've seen so many of these launches. The hand that touches the sandwich mostly touches the needle. Release me now. Mine children, their hearts are pending. You have to admit, you do turn butter now a lot better than you used to. Have you thought about e-butter turning? Huh? Let's log on right now. I must go. Birds are in my yard. Give him a log on. Yeah. Oh, give him one. Give him a log. Yeah. Give him a log. I've got the site loaded. He can log on his gas. Look, on this guy, look. Oh, come on, on this guy, and this look. The page is coming up. I want not the handling of strange online butter. Jeez, man, let butter have a future. Yali. Come on, work with us here. Okay, step into the portal. Come on. Yep. We don't have all day. This is a happy license here. Can somebody kind of move him close? We're really not getting in. Yes. Oh, well. Look at the way he steps. He's advanced. He's on. Oh. Now is when you're really going to... Uh-huh. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Amish Guy 2006. That's got a ring to it. I like it. No, he uh, isn't. He's still here somewhere in the future. Everyone is. Yes, sir. All right, well, room for improvement. Not bad, though. Not bad at all. Okay, so um, I guess the last thing I wanted to talk about was uh, last thing here is um, uh, balloon. It's at balloon.hobbix.com, and uh, basically um, the idea here is is uh, Ruby Gems, right? Have you guys ever tried to hack Ruby Gems? You've hacked Ruby Gems. <laughs> Guys, um, um, unfortunately, I don't have any slides to show you, but um, if you hit the site, what it does is you can set up, um, you can set up little scripts um, that, you know, that basically download gems temporarily, okay, in temporary folders so that you can try out programs without having to install them in your main directory. And, um, and I'm hoping that that programs like this will help stimulate putting together like a gem API because generally speaking we, we use the command line, that's great and stuff like that. But there are some there's some fun uses of of uh, of um, you know gem hacking. If you if you you know change basically the load path um, inside gems there's a command called use paths and um, but there's there's some finagling you have to do with that in MKMF to get them working right. It sounds like an industrial band. <laughs> but um, it's not. It's make files. Some industrial bands may make make files, but that's not this. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'll, I'll, so yeah, check it out. It's, it's probably kind of buggy right now because it's brand new, but um, it's something I thought I'd mention.
to know that the thing that broke was not the strap I made, it was the rental guitar. Hey, it just came right out. Yeah, no, I put it back in, but if it happens again, it's not me, it's them. I'm an excellent seamstress, I made my own wings. I just made my guitar strap.
Okay, we're going to just play one more song for you this evening. And um, you guys have just been great. You know, can't wait to meet, meet uh, everyone.
While we're sitting down, we're just going to put up a classic cartoon for you. Well, lately, I've been reading the blogs, and a Python guy has been spying on us, stealing up all our trade secrets. We're so not surprised that we forgot to leave our house a cave. Wait, what trade secrets? He probably means PEP 343, in which Python receives its own syntax for anonymous blogs. Don't forget Django, where Python developers can be found copying Rails word for word. They're not copying Rails. Ha! Ah, looks like we found our snake in the grass. Don't you mean snake? In the jewel closet? So, snake boy, what else are you going to copy? What's next? You guys going to get a bunch of your own Japanese guys? Eigen classes? <laughs> you think you can take all our Eigen classes? We're done copying you guys. I'm just waiting for you to start copying us. Copy you? Who would copy you? We don't need white space, you stupid airhead in your air language. Yes, but he has a good point, Mr. Malski. Python has long had its own bytecode format, as well as its own object database and great Unicode support. Maybe we could use some of their ideas. This young Python supporter is a human being, after all. Look at him. He has arms and legs like many human beings. <laughs> Mr. Examiner, I don't want to start a fist fight over whether this young man is a human being or not. When it comes down to it, he probably is underneath all that venom. But I am a grown man, and no one here can force me to indent my source code. I've seen Python source code, and you have to take a pretty deep breath to snorkel down through the levels of scope inside these scripts. Just break up your stuff into smaller functions. <laughs> what? Um, just break it up. Break your code up into smaller functions. You shouldn't be nesting that deeply. Well, okay, that's true. Yeah? Seriously, good answer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, does anyone in here like to rollerblade? We, we all do. do. We all rollerblade here. This must mean we're all human beings. Human beings and close friends. You guys, was this a setup? You really got me. That was the best. She totally thought I even cared about Python people. <laughs> Let's give it up for why the lucky stick and the thirsty cuffs. <laughs> <laughs>